Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. If you know that tonight is your night, and that you are going to have everything heaven has prepared for you, I said, Praise the Lord. We're talking about unforgettable, undeniable encounter with the God of wonders. And this day, as the Lord touches your life, transforms your life, something you will never forget. A miracle you will never forget. An encounter with the Almighty God you'll never forget will drop on your life. The Lord is going to open the windows of heaven, the gates of heaven, open wide tonight. And you are the one under that outpouring, that unforgettable power that the Lord will do in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Father, we well, thank you and bless your name. We glorify you. We come with hearts of expectation and faith, knowing that nothing will stand between anyone and your miracle power tonight in Jesus' name. We're asking, Lord, that you'll prove yourself a sufficient God, a mighty God, a wonder-walking God, a mountain-moving God in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray everything that is wrong, everything that is loosened up, everything that is broken down, you fix it up for everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Your brain, will fix it up. And your tummy, you'll fix it up. And all the pains and all the agony in your life and your family, you'll fix everything up tonight for you in Jesus' name. I pray that as the message goes on, as the prophecy goes on, as the promises are revealed, and as the power of God is released tonight, you will not miss your miracle. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. And somebody there with excitement and faith and confidence in God will shout, Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, again, we're coming to Isaiah. Isaiah has a lot to tell us about what Christ was coming to do on the earth, about the effect of the power of the provision of the death and the effect of Calvary. Isaiah has a lot to tell us about salvation and righteousness, about heaven, about even hell, and about healing, about deliverance. Isaiah has a lot to tell us on the blessing we will receive when the child that is born, and the son that is given, and the one that comes with power, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Isaiah has a lot to tell us. We come to Isaiah chapter 40, and I'm reading from verse 8. I say chapter 40 verse 8 the grass withereth and the flower fadeth but the word of our God shall stand forever what's he talking about the, the flower fadeth the grass withereth is comparing all the things in the world the earth the plantation even the empires, even the things, the works of men. He said, all those things are compared to the grass that withers. And they are compared to the flower that fades. Tell me more about that, I say. He means all the empire of the Egyptians of old. He means all the empires of the Assyrians, they're like grass. He means all those empires of the Grecian 
and prom. It says all those things of the past, they are like grass, it withers away. Man, with all this power, man, with all this ingenuity, man, with all the solution it tries to bring, it says everything of man is like grass, it withers away, like flower, it fades away. But it says the word of God, the word of promise, and the word of power, and the word of prophecy, and the word that is permanent, it says, you cannot compare that with all the works of men. They all fade away, they all wither away. But it says, the word of our God shall stand forever. Somebody shout, Amen. amen. That means everything visible. Everything knowable, everything that you can see and touch, everything tangible on earth will wither away, will vanish away, but the word of God, the word that created the whole universe, and God said, let there be and it became, it was, it says that word as powerful as the day of creation, that word as mighty as when the Almighty spoke, is still as powerful today. When it says, let there be light, there will be light. When he says, let there be salvation for that person there, immediately there will be salvation for you. And when, I, I'm losing some amen there. And when he says, let there be healing, let there be deliverance, that word stands forever. And it's going to be fulfilled. And tonight, that word that never loses its power is coming to you. Wonders coming to you. Salvation coming to you. Righteousness coming to you. Redemption coming to you. Because he gives the word. He pronounces the word. He decrees the word that stands forever. Look at verse 9. In verse 9 it says, O Zion that bringeth good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings, good news, gospel, lift up thy voice, and with strength lift it up, and be not afraid, Zion, you have eternity, you have eternal virtue, you have eternal power you have eternal proclamation there's nothing to be afraid of because all that men can do all that men can think all the maneuvering of men they wither away they're like grass and they fade away and they are like the flowers but it says the word that I give you to go and deliver the word that saves and the word that heals and the word that does mighty miracles in the life of men and women, it abides forever. Therefore, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say to the cities of, Jer of Judah, behold thy God. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, behold, the Lord God will come. Was strong hand is coming to you tonight with strong hand. And it says, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him. His work before him. His work before him. He's still alive and his work before him. And since he remains alive, he remains mighty, he remains powerful, his work his wonders, his salvation, his recreation, his transformation that abides because his work is before him. We're told in verse 11, it says in verse 11, he shall flee, feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm. His arm. I don't know things are important. His arm created. His arm gathers. His arm blesses. I'll show you later why that arm is very important. And it says he carries them in his bosom. 
and shall gently lead those that are with young. That thing that Isaiah said, turn to the New Testament now and look at First Peter. First Peter, I'm reading from chapter 1, verse 23. It says, Being born again. Somebody shout, Born again. Born again, born again. I am born again. Born again, born again. You've been born for the first time. And now there is a new experience and there is a fresh experience and it is the experience of coming to the Lord so that something greater than a earthly birth and something greater than the natural birth and something greater than your date of birth. You know, every time they want you to fill a form, either you're entering school or you're going to do a particular work and they want to keep some profile, they want to keep some record about you. They say date of birth and then you remember and that one you never forget and you write it down you submit the form now they know this is how old you are now at the beginning of eternity at the beginning of eternal life you say put your date of birth that's the date of being born again when eternal life will start when eternal destiny will begin and when the very life of God that never ends when it will start in your life that is the date of your spiritual birth and it is being born again it says being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible not of corruptible seed but incorruptible how do you understand that one you see when you were born at first, if the seed from the father that got to your mother and the seed, sometimes the doctors will say there's something wrong with this seed. It is weak. It is kind of disease and it has some elements that will not be able to produce a strong child. A and healthy child and he said that seed is weak so we're then as we look at the genes and what they call the chromosomes you'll see that you know that's why this one is like that that's why this one is like that that's one that like this one is like that of corruptible seed it is corruptible it can have disease it can have germs it can have some cells attached to that and it says this new birth the birth from heaven and the birth spiritual and the birth supernatural it is not a corruptible seed but but by the word of god which liveth and abideth forever verse 24 in verse 24 it says for all flesh is as grass that's what Isaiah said. That's what the Holy Ghost through Peter is still saying. He says, all flesh is as grass. And all the glory, all the achievement, all the research, all the result, everything man has done, all the intelligence of man, all the glory of man is as the flower of the grass. And he says, the grass withereth and the flower thereof faileth or falleth away and then in verse 25 it says but the word of the lord stronger than anything on earth the word of the lord it says endure it forever and this is the word which by the gospel the good news is preached unto you what does that mean it says the gospel we're hearing it says the word we're hearing is stronger lives longer healthier incorruptible like all the works of men and that same gospel comes to you today and this incorruptible gospel will save your soul Amen. It will heal your body like no medicine can heal your body. It will make you healthy. It will make you strong. It will perfect everything concerning you because it says, and this is the word which by the gospel, by the good news, is preached unto you. I'm talking to you tonight on the privileged beneficiaries of 
the gospel of wonders the gospel of wonders that grants us the wonder of salvation the wonder of healing the wonder of deliverance the wonder of miracles without number tonight is your night am i talking to somebody there tonight is your night in jesus name three things we're looking at very quickly number one believing and receiving believing and receiving that means everyone who believes receives you are not a spectator here tonight amen you came came to believe and you came to receive believing and receiving the wonders of his salvation but you know there are some they don't understand they don't know they are undoing themselves they don't know they are blocking their own way but they do they do that's what the Pharisees did when Christ came that's what the Egyptians did when Moses came that's what those Canaanites that's what they did they blocked their own way they had a, confer a confederacy and they had what were called conspiracy and they bound themselves together and they said we will not let Joshua and the people of Israel go and enter into the land they blocked themselves by the grace of God, you will not block yourself. Amen. From wonders, from salvation, from holiness, from heaven, from the power of God, you will not block yourself in Jesus' name. But I must give some time and talk to you about them. That's why we have point number two, blocking and resisting the willingness of the Savior. The willingness of the Savior. He came to save. And everyone who believes, anyone, everyone who submits and surrenders himself to the Lord will be saved will be healed will be delivered will be blessed and the treasures of heaven will come upon that life but if somebody blocks himself if somebody receives the willingness of the savior that fellow is gone to the other side forever and because he was responsible and he blocked himself he'll not come to the side of the lord number three here is becoming the recipients becoming the receivers becoming the people that have his wholeness for all seekers for everyone that comes and is seeking the lord and he wants the goodness of the lord the goodness of his grace the goodness of his power and the goodness of his spirit and the goodness of his sufficiency in their lives they become the recipients of his wholeness for all seekers we're coming to number one number one is believing and receiving the wonders of his salvation look at that at those two words believing and receiving the wonders of his salvation look at isaiah chapter 53 and i'm reading from verse 1 isaiah chapter 3 53 verse 1 who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the lord revealed who has believed our report who has believed that report it says our report it's not only my report i said it said who has believed our report i say what do you mean uh, moses came to the people and he said the lord sent me to deliver you and only those who believe who has believed the reports they saw the arm of the lord and the arm of the lord delivered them and saved them and then joshua was restored and joshua told them all those jericho walls they will fall down and who has believed the report of moses 
Moses, those were the people that came out of the land of captivity. And Joshua, who has believed our report, they are the people, the people that believed the report, they saw the arm of the Lord. They saw the glory of the Lord. They saw the deliverance of the Lord. Here comes David. And David was telling Saul, he said, can I give you some report? I was in the wilderness and then a lion came to take one of those lambs and I took him and I tore him to pieces. He said the bear came wanting to destroy, wanting to take away one of those lambs. He said, I destroyed him. Now Saul, listen to this, this Goliath, this Philistine will be like one of them. I said, your Goliath, your Philistine will be like one of them who has believed our report as they believe that this little David, it will bring Goliath down. Then the arm of the Lord was manifested. I say, I say, now, uh, have you heard my report? Ezekiah came to me. He was sick unto death. In fact, I told him, I said, set your house in order because you will surely die. And then he said, I'm not ready to die now. Anybody ready to die there? No. You are not ready to die. You will not die. Yeah. Calvary will destroy that messenger of death in your life in Jesus name who has believed our report and then God said go tell Ezekiah I add 15 years to your days and the man believed and the man believed and the arm of the Lord was revealed unto him it is the person the man the woman that believes the report. Those are the people that have the arm of the Lord, the power of the Lord revealed unto them. And as you believe that message today and that report today and you believe the message of salvation that this is what the Lord will do, the arm of the Lord will be revealed unto you. Yeah. Say good amen. amen. Now, that thing that Isaiah said in chapter 53, reading there from verse 1, and he said, Who has believed our report? I want you to come to John chapter 12 and verse 38. We're now crossing from the Old Testament and we're coming to the New Testament. In John chapter 12, reading from verse 38, it says, Isaiah said, Isaiah said, Who has believed our report again John what are you talking about who has believed our report Jesus went teaching and preaching and healing the sick do you believe that report and it said Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever do you believe that report John is saying whenever you hear the report the word the imperishable word the word the unconquerable word the word the word that has power power to do what the report has said it says when you believe that report the armor of the lord is revealed unto you look at that in john chapter 12 but such is that that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled which is speak lord look at this now john <clears throat> in the New Testament saying, Lord, who has believed our report and to whom as the arm of the Lord. Do you see the connection? You believe and then the arm of the Lord is revealed. You accept and the arm and the power. You understand the arm? If you want to carry something and your arm is strong and your arm is mighty and your arm is powerful, it's that arm symbolizing the power and the might and the strength with which you carry what you are carrying and it is when you believe the report look at the report of Matthew how in the evening many came to the Lord and Jesus spoke the word and he healed them and he cast out all the devils do you believe that report then the arm of the Lord will be revealed and look at the report of Mark Mark says that this man had an only son he'll fall into the river he'll fall 
fall into the fire because the devil wanted to destroy him and then Jesus said if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believe that's the report of Mark and Luke says these ten lepers they came and they shouted and they said if thou wilt you can make us clean son of David son of God where lepers cleanse us and Jesus said, go show yourself unto the priest. And then as they were going, they were all healed, the ten of them, 100%, without exception. As they believed the report, he said, that is how the power of God was manifested unto them. John said, Jesus came to the pool of Siloam. And then it says that, will you be made whole? And then he said, I I have no man when the water is troubled to pull me into the pool and Jesus said rise up take up thy bed and go home immediately the power of God came upon him and John is now saying Matthew gave the report Mark gave the report and Luke gave the report and John gave the report he says like Isaiah said who has believed our report and to whom is the armor of the Lord be revealed as you believe the report tonight the arm of the Lord will be revealed to you the arm that says that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved that salvation will come to you and then this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they'll cast out devils in my name they'll take that serpent and throw it away in my name if they drink any deadly thing by accident or somebody trying to play tricks on them it will not hurt you and then they lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover if you believe that report it is done tonight <laughs> salvation comes tonight healing comes tonight deliverance comes tonight how because we believe believed believe the report in romans chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 16 romans chapter 10 we're reading from verse 16 but they have not all obeyed the gospel those are the people that block themselves from salvation they block themselves from deliverance they block themselves from the wonders and the miracles of god that's why he said they have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah says, Isaiah says, Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our report? Who has believed our report? All the testimonies we are hearing from the GCK, we've heard of blind eyes opening, we've heard of the lame rising up and walking, and we've heard of the people that have problem in their tummy, and something is doing pro 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 there, and then the power of the Lord came on that tummy, and everything vanished away. All those reports we have heard, we have heard of the dead being raised and we have heard of impossibilities becoming possible. Now, it is when we believe that report, as Isaiah said, as John said, and as Romans Paul the Apostle now is saying, and then he tells us in verse 17, in verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing the faith to get saved the faith to be forgiven and the faith to have a new life in Christ the faith that sets the sinner free that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God thank God that word is coming to you tonight and thank God you are going to be totally delivered tonight in Jesus name I believe. I believe. I, believe. I believe. Those who believe the report will have the power, the might, the strength, the arm of the Lord be revealed to them. Thank God you believe. Are you still believing there? And the Lord will honor that faith tonight in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 2. Isaiah chapter 9. We're reading from verse 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen 
a great light and they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them the light shine amen uh, look at what has uh, seen there it said the people the people that are walking in darkness when you are walking in darkness you do not see the pitch before you you don't see the graded uh, the graded ground before you you do not see where you fall and stumble and then break your bones and destroy your life the people that walked in darkness now they have seen the light even when you are walking in total darkness even the light of a candle can help a lot even the uh, the light of uh, you know your torch and light uh, that that will do a lot even the light of the morning the light of the evening will do a lot but now it says they've seen a great light a great light that means the sun that rules the day a great light you are in total darkness all of a sudden everything turned around and now you have a great light they that dwell in the shadow in the land of the shadow of death upon them as the light shine that's old testament come now to matthew chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 16 matthew chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 16 the people which sat in darkness saw a great light who did they see jesus the light of the world they were in total darkness and a lot of things were crawling on them a lot of things were destroying their lives and these people in the new testament now that search in darkness now all of a sudden savior redeemer healer deliverer appeared and they saw the great light and everyone that saw him and saw that great light they were saved you will see him tonight everyone that saw him and saw that great light they were healed you will see him tonight everyone in bondage that saw him they were totally delivered all the bondage all the chains and the shackles of sin and of sickness and of satanic attack everything broken tonight tonight I said tonight, broken your life in Jesus' name. And then he said to them which search in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung forth. What's the result of that? Look at verse 17. In verse 17, from that time, Jesus began to preach unto them to preach now they saw the great light from heaven they saw the light that would dispel every darkness from their body and from their soul from their spirit and from their family and it says Jesus began to preach and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and then he tells us in verse 23 in verse 23 it says and jesus went about all galilee he had to go about and show himself so that all those people in darkness they'll see the light the light of the world he had to go about that light so that all the sick and all the depraved and all those people that are deceased they will see him the great light and they will get here and that's why the gck has come to you you will see the light of his salvation you'll see the light of his power and his healing will be effected in your life in jesus name and jesus went about all galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people any amen there amen. look at verse 24 in verse 24 and his fame went throughout all syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken in diverse different dangerous diseases deadly diseases and torments and those that were possessed with devils and those that were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he healed them how many of them 
kill them all. How many of us? You see Christ the Savior tonight. You see Christ the healer tonight. You see Christ the deliverer tonight. And everyone, remember who has believed our report. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. And as you believe the report, the report of his healing power. And the report of his saving power. As you believe that tonight, salvation and righteousness will come your way. Healing and deliverance will come to you right there. Believing and receiving the wonders of his salvation. Let's come to number two now. I told you already that there are people who block their own salvation. There are people who block their own healing. There are people who block the power of God from their own lives. You will not be blocked in Jesus' name. Uh, do you remember? Do you remember that our dear sister, young sister, uh, a newborn uh, sister that testified yesterday? I said, I said I was coming to that place where the GCK is holding, and then my brother said, No, you will not go. You will not go. But the young young sister was suffering, and if it, if that man wanted to block her way, that she would not have her deliverance deliverance her salvation and he kept ordaining it in her ears you must not go we belong to that we belong to that we belong to that and then she made up her mind you are not the one suffering i'm the one suffering i'm dying and i'm a sort solution here solution here solution there and yet there was no relief i am going there and she came and she got her miracle she would not allow anyone she would not allow a brother, a sister, a relation, a religious man, whoever, she will not allow anyone to block her way and to receive the miracle power that was coming to her. You will not allow anybody to block your way. Nobody will block your way. But you see, there are people who block their own ways. I'm looking here at um, Matthew chapter 13. In Matthew chapter 13, it says in verse 14, Matthew chapter 13, reading from verse 14, in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said he, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand. How is it that somebody hears and he does not understand? I think I understand how that happens. I was, you know, a student and then I became a teacher. And in the class, if I, before I came to the class, if I had something in my mind and I was daydreaming, all that the teacher was saying, all that the teacher was writing, I would not understand because actually I didn't give hundred percent of my attention to what the teacher was saying because of that I did not have understanding at that level even though I had what he was saying eventually I woke up I said I want to have a good grade and if I'm going to have a good grade what the teacher is saying I know now must pay attention and I took away all the daydreaming from my mind and I focused on what the teacher was saying and good enough I understood the problem was not in my brain the problem was not in my intelligence the problem was not in my IQ intelligence quotients the problem was my paying attention the problem was not allowing any daydreaming to hinder my way and later I became a teacher myself and as I was teaching and these students all of them will be in the class this one will have the section that one will have F outright F and yet both of them were in the class and I said how can this be that this one by the same teacher is uh, getting it and making distinction and they saw that were always in the class and always having F 
now I understood what happened to me years gone by happened to that one. They were thinking of boyfriend, they were thinking of girlfriend, and they were saying, teacher, finishing time, finishing time. I have an appointment with my same partner. And so, because they were not paying attention, they didn't understand. It wasn't anything wrong with me, the teacher. Because in that same class, somebody had distinction. If you will kind of wipe off and take off and clean up all that daydreaming and all the evil things you are thinking and planning. I'm going to the crusade. When they finish, I'm going to rush and go there. If you will repent of that and take that away from you, all the blockages, everything will vanish away from your life in Jesus' name. Now look at these people. Isaiah says of them, by hearing he shall hear and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see and not perceive look at verse 15 in verse 15 for these people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed if, if a good picture is shown up to you and then you close your eyes and will say what colors do you see here I don't see any color. It's not the fault in the picture. It's not the fault of the one showing you the picture. Their eyes, they have closed. If when other people are receiving salvation and the joy of salvation is beaming out through them, and then you close your eyes and will say, do you see these people who are getting saved and their lives are transformed? You like, cannot see. You cannot see because you deliberately close your eyes as well prayer was say in Jesus name and the final amen got them out of their wheelchair and you close your eyes and then other people are clapping and jubilating and you block your ears and we say what did you see I saw nothing you can see nothing because you deliberately close your eyes what did you hear I had nothing because you blocked your ears there are people that block their own salvation away from them and they block their own healing deliverance wonders away from them because they allow their eyes to be closed and they allow their minds to be sealed that they will not hear that's why it says less at any time that's why they close their eyes that's why they block their vision it says less at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their with their ears and should understand what their heart and should be converted when they open their eyes they'll be converted when they hear a right they'll be converted and when they think of what they're hearing and they believe the report and the arm of the Lord is revealed unto them they will be converted and then the last part says and I should heal them if you don't block your mind from the report and you open your heart you open your mind you open your will you open your willingness unto the word of god you are hearing tonight is the night of your conversion the lord will so purge your life purify your life and the lord will so cancel every dirty sin in your life you'll become a brand new creature in christ somebody shout amen it will so turn your life around it will so transform your life that we will not see that you are in Christ if any man any woman be in Christ it's a new creature old things are passed away and behold how many things are becoming new in your life how many things in your family how many things in your character how many things in your habit how many things behold all things are become new i pray you will not block your own way i pray somebody sitting by your side will not block you 
how can he block me while we're praying he's talking to you while we're praying he's checking on his phone he's looking for email he's looking for all the things that came in and he taps and says, see 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 what came he's blocking your way he didn't want you to understand he didn't want you to have the salvation of the lord he did not want you to have the healing of the lord they block their own ways and they allow other people to block them and resist Christ's willingness to save them, the Lord will turn your life around. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28, I'm reading from verse 25. In Acts chapter 28, verse 25, look at this. It says, when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. When they agreed not, Jesus, his Savior, Paul, had declared. Other people said, no, Jesus is not Savior. Our tradition, Moses, our ceremonies, our washing in River Jordan, no, Jesus is not Savior. There was no agreement. When you hear the word of God and you don't agree, that's why it says, who has believed in a report, who has agreed with the report that we have heard, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed if you don't agree that Jesus is the only way and is the way to total complete triumphant transforming salvation if you don't agree you cannot be saved it is when you hear the word that same word has saved other people that same word has forgiven other people that same word has transformed their lives and they have new life a new transformation of life is when you agree and you say he saved others and is the only savior i accept i agree that's when salvation will come to you is coming to you tonight it says and when they agreed not among themselves they departed after paul had spoken one word well speak the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers. Verse 26. In verse 26, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear, but shall not understand. Why don't they why didn't they understand? They were holding to the old era. They were holding to the old tradition. They were holding to, even if I'm wrong, I prefer to be wrong. Look at all these Pharisees and look at all these Sadducees. I'm in here and I'm in agreement with them. And you cannot be in agreement with darkness and light at the same time. You cannot be in agreement with truth and error at the same time. And because of that, they shall hear, but they shall not understand. Seeing, ye shall see, but not perceive. And then in verse 27 it says for the heart of these people is waxed gross and their ear dull of hearing and their eyes look at this have they closed god didn't close their eyes they closed their own eyes tradition closed their eyes and the unbelief closed their eyes it says their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. The people who are not converted, they are the people that block their own ways. And the people who are not healed, they are the people that sealed their own minds. Thank God you are not like that. You hear, you understand, you believe, you'll be saved tonight. You hear, you accept, you don't argue, you believe you are going to be healed tonight. I come now to point number three. Point number three, we're looking at the coming, the recipients of his wholeness for all seekers. How many seekers? How many seekers? 
we have come today and the Lord is going to heal, is going to deliver, is going to set free in Jesus' name. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 51 and I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 1. Hacking to me, ye that follow after righteousness. There are people, they're looking for righteousness, and that righteousness can only come from Christ, our Redeemer, and He gives us His righteousness, and He takes our unrighteousness, our unrighteousness, our sin away. And He says, Her King, listen, we must hear, we must hacking we must accept what we hear that's how redemption will come to us that's how healing will come to us and that's how the new life will come to us hacking to me ye that follow after righteousness ye that seek the lord we're seeking the lord because is the lord our savior is the lord our sanctifier is the lord our healer is the lord our deliverer is the lord our redeemer and our heart is after him our heart is spontaneous our heart is desirous and we want his salvation and it says ye that seek the lord look unto the rock whence ye are hewn the rock from which you are cut out and to the hole of the peach whence ye are dig we have been in the hole we have been in the trench we have been in the ditch and then we say I want to come out of this ditch I want to come out of the trenches I want to come out of the pit I don't want to remain here powerless I don't want to remain here just turning around, turning around, and uh, you know, going over the same path again. I want a new life. I want salvation. I want righteousness. I want healing. I want deliverance. I want the power, the arm of the Lord to be efficacious and powerful and mighty on my behalf. He then say, Look at the hole from which you are dug. You are dig. He says in verse 2, he says, Look unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah that begat you. How? What should I look at? God spoke to Abraham and he believed that and it was counted to him for righteousness. Everything the Lord said come out of the all of the Chaldees and come out from all the idolatrous worship and come out of all those uh, dark idolatrous ceremonies come out he agreed and he came out and the Lord said walk before me he agreed to walk before God and the Lord said consecrate and bring what is precious to you and give that to me he knew if he gave God any precious thing the Lord will give him back something greater something eternal and something more precious and he did that and then God now said when I spoke to Abraham your father you're the father of faith to the circumcision and to the uncircumcision he believed he believed the same attitude he had and the same response he had and the same reliance he had unto the Lord Luke unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah that bear you for I called him alone I called him alone and he wasn't looking around is any other person following am i the only one that will get saved am i the only one that will give my light to the lord am i the only one that will follow the way of the lord he didn't look around he didn't look around he said if i'm the only one in the whole earth that is hearing this call to repentance and hearing this call to righteousness and hearing this call to salvation if i am the only one in the world I will follow, I will follow, I will follow. And so he didn't know this song, but it was his life showed the song. I've decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I have 
decided. I called him alone. It wasn't like in a crowd and everybody, I want you to come, want you to come. Let's go together. You're my friend. Let's go together. He called him alone. And the Lord is calling you alone tonight. Yeah. And he will do good in your life. It will save your soul. It will cleanse your sin. It will break every yoke in your life in Jesus' name. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The walls against me. All the same. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me and the walls behind me. Whatever. No turning back. No turning back. My friends may forsake me. Anything may happen. But the Lord is calling me. He says, look unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah that bear you for I called him alone and then Abraham he heard he understood he saw he perceived and because of that he put all his concentration he put all his focus he put all the direction of his life to go the direction God was calling him to follow and then he said because he appeared before me and he responded to my word alone I blessed him I called he got up and he followed me and because he followed me not minding what anybody will say i blessed him and increased him that's you i said that's you the step you take tonight and you abandon your sin you confess and forsake you're not looking around who follows who does not follow you with all your mind all your soul, all your strength, all the determination you have in your heart. And you say, I will follow. And you follow, Christ will take hold of you. It will clean up your life. It will purge your life. It will bless you with a great blessing that you never thought you will have in your life. This is that moment, the moment of decision in your life. Look unto Abraham. Other people have done this before us. The Lord called them and on their own, they followed the Lord. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. It's going to make you a new person today. A new life today. A new personality today. Let's bow and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord is calling you now. He's saying, I'm waiting here to give you salvation, to give you redemption, to give you forgiveness, to give you eternal life. You are the one is calling. Take the call personal and say, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Anybody there? Lord, I come. Say that. Lord, I come. Say, Lord, I come. Say that again. Put the emphasis on I. Lord, I come. The Lord make it effective in your life in Jesus' name. It's bowed and eyes closed. You now, from the depth of your heart, you now from a firm decision from your heart and unshakable and irresistible and unbendable unbreakable decision you say lord i come wherever you are you raise up your hand don't worry about other people you raise up your hand you've heard the call of god and you've heard is calling you out of darkness into the light is calling you out of sin to the savior is calling you out of the old life and is calling you to the new life wherever you are where are you raise up that hand lord i come lord i come lord i come if you are raising up your hand god bless you there you 
you stand up, you stand up, you stand up. Don't worry about any other person beside here or there. You raise up your hand and you stand up and say, Lord, I come. Blessing waiting for you, Lord, I come. Salvation waiting for you, Lord, I come. Eternal life waiting for you. Right, so wherever you are, and we're going to pray together now. And we're going to seal that your response. And we're going to seal that your, uh, that your answer to the call of God. We're going to seal it so that the word of God will be fulfilled in your life. Born again by the incorruptible seed. That is the word of God which abides forever. I saw, I saw. Don't delay. Abraham did not delay. Don't delay. Say now is the time for me. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Father, in Jesus' name. All these who have responded to your call, they call to repentance and they turn away from their sin. And they call to salvation. They come to the Savior. I pray, Lord, in your love, in your mercy, your compassion, in your grace, forgive them in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, the new life will come to them right now. I pray the evidence of faith, justification. You give to them now in Jesus name I pray that all the guilt of the past all the condemnation of the past you take away from their lives right now freedom freedom redemption peace of mind righteousness the righteousness of Christ give to them now in Jesus name and let your spirit be witness with their spirit, with their heart. They are now children of God. Thank you, Lord. It is done. You are saved. You are born again. A new life has come to you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can keep on standing. Our counselors are there. The members of the choir and other Christian workers, they are there to attend to you. Please give them the right, the correct information and your salvation be permanent in Jesus' name. We're called on our officiating minister tonight uh, to lead us in this uh, time of counseling and by the grace of God I'll come again. Your deliverance Deliverance, your miracle, your wonders are certained and sure tonight in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. You've taken the best decision in life. A decision to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, the lover of your soul. The one that will take you from this earth to heaven. The best decision is the decision you have taken tonight. Please cooperate with the counselors that are standing by you now. Give them your correct name and your correct address. Please do so. And your correct telephone number. Very important. Now you have decided to follow Jesus. No more telling lies. Every information you give to them will be accurate. Correct, true, nothing that will be, you know, put there that is not the right thing. Just give them your correct name, your correct address, your correct telephone number. Very important. Please do so. Do so with all your heart as you have responded to this call. That the servant of God has given through the message you have heard now. Do everything correctly and truthfully. If you are watching online and you just gave your life to Christ. After the pastor's message this night. This is a link that you need to take right now. Just below your player, click it and fill the form 
so we can assist you further in your new walk with Christ. For those of you online, this information is for you to help you in your newfound faith as you have decided to walk with the Lord Jesus. Also, if you are listening via the radio or television and you just gave your life to Christ, send your name, phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to this phone number. Please listen attentively. Plus 234. Nine one five four 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 nine two six three. Let me go over it again. Plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. There will be a special meeting. Launch out with Jesus. For those of you who are here at the Alpha location that just took this great, wonderful, profitable decision tonight to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Tomorrow, 3 p.m., just at the pavilion over there. This luncheon with Jesus is for those of you who have given your life to Christ. Please endeavor to be there tomorrow. There will be a special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their lives to Christ on Sunday, 5th February. 2023. More details about this will be sent to you. Our pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. Thank you for honoring this invitation to make yourself available. As our believers banquet comes up Sunday, 5th February, 2023, at Deeper Life Bible Church Headquarters, SNA, time, 3 p.m. Sunday, 5th February. Take note of this announcement, please. It's for you. If you just receive Christ, please follow this information we have given to you. It's to help you, to guide you, to make progress in your walk with the Lord. Counselors, please make sure you attend to every one of them. We have taken this decision tonight. To the right, to the middle, to the left. Please, let's take time to do that. If you are there and no counselor has reached you, please just signify by raising up your hand. And once you do that, the counselors will locate you. And he'll come to you. Don't hide yourself. The decision you have taken tonight is the decision that will take you from earth to heaven, where you'll spend eternity with the Lord. You've heard the message. So clear and profitable. Thank you for the decision you have made. The Lord will bless you as you wholeheartedly give your details. Don't hide anything. If the place you live does not have an address, 
just tell the counselors the whatever they can use to indicate to locate you maybe you stay behind a particular a popular place any of the popular place that can easily be located just tell them and also the name by which you are known in the place where you live give all this information they are very necessary please cooperate and as you do god will bless you all this is just to help you by the grace of god to make progress in your new walk with the lord jesus don't hide any information do everything truthfully sincerely the decision you have taken to stand up and surrender your life to christ let that same decision lead you on give your correct name correct address your correct phone number do it joyfully the lord will bless you counselors please let's attend to them if the counselors have not reached you i repeat just signify by raising up your hand they will locate you quickly and counselors please write their names very clearly and correctly if there are people who can write on their own allow them to write that will make it a faster for us those who cannot write you help them those who can write and they have their writing pen please allow them to do that quickly the pastor will be glad that you make yourself available after this decision 3 p.m tomorrow here at the pavilion right there to my right can we'll be having the launch fellowship with jesus come make yourself available and for those of you who gave your life to Christ on first day and you have not attended the fellowship for Friday, those of you for Friday, you couldn't come on Saturday. And those of you for Saturday, you couldn't come yesterday, Sunday. And those of you yesterday, Sunday, you couldn't attend today, please, we'd like to see you tomorrow. Again, those of you who have watched this program online and you've surrendered your life to Jesus, I repeat the announcement. I repeat the announcement. There is a player just below your player, rather, below your player. Click it and fill the form. If you click, the form will appear. You'll see it. Fill it so we can assist you further in your newfound faith. Very important. We like to get in touch with you. The pastor is waiting to hear from you. Everything we're asking you to do is to help you that this decision you have made tonight you will make progress. You will grow in it and become stronger in the Lord. I repeat, for those of you here tonight who have given your life to Christ, tomorrow, 3 p.m., at the pavilion right there, to my right, 
there'll be the launch fellowship with the Lord Jesus. 3 p.m. Please make yourself available. Those of you who have listened to the message over the radio or your television and you have taken this decision as directed by the servant of God, please follow this instruction we are passing across to you. Send your name, your phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to this telephone number plus 234 February 5th, there's going to be a special banquet. Please we rise up now as the servant of God comes for the ministration. Praise the Lord. You are there and you believe that your miracle is nearby when you hear the final amen that miracle will be there yeah. my miracle my miracle, my miracle. will be there in jesus name yeah. who has believed our report you've heard the report christ died he was meeting by stripes were healed who has believed that report and everyone that came to him in the evening they came the blind the dumb the deaf the lame the maimed the, the, the insane the lunatic and they all came and with his word one word he drove away all their sicknesses and they were healed that's the report were given who has believed our report said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me because you hear me always. For the sake of these people who are here, I say this. And then he turned and said, Lazarus, rise up, come out, come forth. And Lazarus came forth. Your healing will come forth. Your miracle will come there. The only thing is believe the report. Who has believed our report and, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. The arm of the Lord is coming to be revealed to you right now. The power, the strength, the might and the healing virtue of the Lord revealed to you right now. You're healed tonight. What is the person I'm talking about there? Raise up one hand and lay the other hand on yourself. Believe the report. Believe the report. And the arm of the Lord will be manifestly revealed unto your Father in Jesus' name. For brothers and sisters and friends and neighbors and all those online, Lord, I pray powerful miracles in every life tonight in Jesus' name. For all people in our local churches all over this country, all over this continent, Africa, all over, beyond Africa, everywhere, Lord, reveal your mighty arm in Jesus' name. And for those of us who are here on this field at the Alpha location, I pray you reveal your might and power and strength and healing virtue on everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, begin your work on everyone. That swelling come out in Jesus' name. The fibroid, the hernia, the swollen tummy, the elephantiasis, be healed in Jesus' name. 
I pray, Lord, that impediment in your speech over there and that ear problem and the dumbness, the Lord touch you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that all so-called incurable diseases, incurable with man, impossible with man, but you are going to cure them tonight. You are going to set them free tonight. I pray, Lord, that cancer be healed right now in Jesus' name. Also, be healed in Jesus' name. And the internal part, the intestine that maybe is gummed up or whatever, I pray there will be a free cause for the word of God now. Open everything that is closed in Jesus' name. I pray those blind eyes will open and see right now. Glaucoma vanish away. Cataract vanish away. Dimness of sight be healed in Jesus' name. The pile be healed in Jesus' name. And the malaria fever be healed in Jesus' name. Typhoid, you're healed in Jesus' name. Brain tumor be removed in Jesus' name. That stone in the kidney melt away right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray those who cannot breathe very well, they have asthma, they are gasping for air. I pray now they'll be relieved completely. Heal them, Lord, in Jesus' name. And the people that you know, they have the dysentery, they are vomiting, they are doing all this, I pray that thing will stop right now. Let your healing virtue pass through everyone's body in Jesus' name. The issue of blood, that is your blood there for a long time now. And you have to use that extra kind of thing to block so that it will not spoil your clothes on the outside. I command that issue of blood dry up now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray those who are hearing those uh, terrible noises in their ears wanting to run them mad. I command that voice, stop in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who are pains in their joints, arthritis and stiffness in their joints. Be loosed up and be healed right now in Jesus' name. Whatever your sickness, whatever your infirmity, and whatever the pain you are going through, the hand of the Lord touches you now. You're healed. You're delivered. You're set free. Lord in everyone, here, right, left, at the back, at the center, in front, over there, online, every country, every, everywhere. Let your healing virtue flow into every life now. In Jesus' name. It is done. For you, it is done. Sister, it is done. Brother, it is done. My son there, my daughter there, it is done. Online, everywhere, it is done. You believe the report and the arm of the Lord is right now upon you. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Check yourself. You'll find the wonder, the miracle, the deliverance. You'll find the healing there. It is done.